Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Abracha and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, Shabbos Daf Zayin, where eight lines from the top, says the Gemara. Vakarmelis. Now we're discussing the various Rushuyas, the various domains, the four Rushuyas the Shabbos. Bryce gave us a list of the four types of categories. We have Rushus Hayachet, a private domain meant for individual private use, meant to store items there. It's an enclosed area. We have Rushus Rabin, which is meant for the flow of, of the public traffic. We have the Carmelis, which is a, an area which has elements of both. It resembles a Rishus HaYochid and Rishus HaRavim. It is not meant for the, the public traffic to go through. It is also not really a contained area. So it has elements of both and the Chacham gave it its own status and applied the elements of Rishus HaYochid and Rishus HaRavim to this Karmelis. Since it is similar to Rishus HaRavim somewhat, therefore you can't carry from it to Rishus HaYochid. Since it also has the elements of Rishus HaYochid, one may not carry from the Karmelis to Rishus HaRavim. So the Bryson gave us examples. What is a Karmelis? A yam, for instance, a sea, a bika, a flat area f- full of fields, a stivanis, those uh, benches uh, in front of the stores, and the Karmelis. So the question is, why does the Bryson find a need to list, to, to reference, to use the word Karmelis? It seems like we are referencing another example. What else is there to reference? Aren't they all considered to be karmless? Yam, bikis, tevanus are all karmless. So why does the Bryce need to add the word about karmless? What is being referenced with this word? Says the Gemara about karmless. Atu kulu nami laf karmless ninu. Aren't they all karmless? So what exactly is referred to with the word about karmless? Which seems to imply that perhaps those aren't karmless, and that's not the case. Of course, they're all karmless. Apparently, we're coming to include another example. So what is it? Ki asr avdimi amr v'yechnon lo nitzrucha. Apparently, Bryce is coming to add the following scenario: lo nitzrucha le keren zavis hasmokal shes rabim. We're coming to add a keren zavis, a corner, which is adjacent to shes rabim. Rashi explains, for instance, the house was built on an angle inward; it was inverted, and that left over a flat area, a triangle flat area, which is adjacent to shes rabim. That area has a din of a karmelis. Explains the Gemara. Why? The Afagav de Zimnan the Dach Kibe Rabim Va'ilu the Gavo. Although occasionally, the Rabim, the public will force their way into this. The overflow traffic from the street will spill over into this Karen's office. Afagav de Zimnan. Occasionally, the Dach Kibe Rabim, the public will force their way into this corner of Va'ilu the Gavo and go in there. Nevertheless, Kivan the Lenicha Tashmishte. Since it's not, it's not convenient to use this this corner because it's out of the straight line of of the thoroughfare. Therefore, it's not considered really part of the main issue of and it has a din of a karmelis, ki karmelis dummy. So this is what the b'risa means to include with the word vaha karmelis. Certainly the other cases of yam, bikas, tevonis, they are all karmelis. The b'risa simply is adding another example of a karen zavis near Rishus Rabbim, and that too is considered to be a karmelis. Continues the Gemara, we have another couple examples of a karmelis. Ki asher of dimi, amr of Bein ha'amudim, nidan ki karmelis. Rashi explains there were pillars positioned in the in the rechava in the plaza where the merchants would hang their they would hang their wares on these on these amudim. Says the Gemara between these amudim, it has a din of a karmelis. Why? My time. Afagav the darsi barabim. Even though the public walks through them, kivan the loy mistigi lehu behedya, since they can't walk in a straight line, since these these pillars were were set up in a, in a disorganized fashion. So in order to get through them, you need to weave through them. It's not a straight walk. Given the mystic since you can't walk through them in a straight line, so there's someone hampers the flow of traffic, Kikamlis dummy, therefore it has a dinner of a Kamalis. So although the public is walking through them, but it's not a, a straight, convenient flow, and therefore it is a Kamalis. Um Rab another example of a Kamalis, Um Rab Zera, Rab Yudah, it's the Shalfnei Amudim, so in front of these pillars, there were these, these low blocks. So those blocks have a din of a karmelis. Nidon ki karmelis. Why? Because we're not meant to step over these blocks. Therefore, they hamper the, the flow of traffic. The public is, is not walking on these blocks, and it has a din of a karmelis. So now the more we'll analyze the cases. According to the Shita, which says that between the pillars, 
is considered to be a Carmelis, although the public walks through, but it's not a convenient walk, it's not a straight walk, therefore it's not a Rishus Rab. So according to this sheet, Koshke and Istva, certainly the blocks, which one can't walk on them at all, is considered to be a Carmelis. However, in the reverse, perhaps it won't be the case. Lamadam Istva, according to the Shita, which tells us that a block is considered to be a Carmelis, perhaps that's only the block. Itzvah hudel anicha tashmishte. Itzvah, it's not convenient. The, the tashmish, the use, is not convenient. It's not convenient to walk on these blocks. And therefore, and has a den of a karmelis. Aval ben amudim, but between these pillars, the nicha tashmishte, one can easily walk through them. Loi, loi, perhaps that will not have a den of a karmelis. So the Mohi suggests that according to the shita, which tells us, Rav Zerah of Yudah, which tells us that the itzvah have a den of a karmelis, that is only the itzvah. But Ben Amudim, he will hold no, that is not a Carmelis, but rather it's just a Rabbim, since the public can make their way through the Amudim. Lishnachrina, another version of this would be as follows that according to Rav Zeir, Amar Yuda, only the Itztava has the den of a Carmelis. Avo Ben Amudim, the Zimnan, the Darsi, Le Rabbim, since occasionally the public will walk, will walk, through, walk through them, walk in between the Amudim, Krishna Sarabim, Damia, therefore has a din of a Shusarabim and not a Carmelis. So in summary, what is a, a Carmelis? So a Carmelis has elements of both Rishusarabim. What are some examples of a Carmelis? The Bryce told us about the Yam, the Bika, the Estevanis, and the Gemara now will add another couple of examples. We began with Karen Zavis, the corner which is adjacent to Rishusarabim. Why is it a Carmelis? Although it's right off the main street, because Lanicha Tashmishte it's not convenient. The use is not convenient because it's, it's off the main line of the thoroughfare. The Gemara told us that the Itztaba Shafniyamudim, the blocks in front of the pillars, is also Lenicha Tashmishte. It's not convenient to step on them and walk over them, and therefore they have a din of a Carmelis as well. The Gemara concluded, Beina Amudim, between the, the pillars. Some will say that that is too. That too is considered to be a Carmelis because although the public walks through them, but it's a mystic behavior. Since it's not a straight walk, you need to weave your way through these the pillars, therefore it has a din of a Carmelis. But this is only according to one shita. The other shita says no. Since nevertheless the people are walking through there, or according to one version of the Gemara, it is nicha tashmishte, it is more convenient. Apparently it's more convenient than the blocks, therefore, bin Amudim is not a Carmelis, but rather a Shusarab. Atonius points out that we know that a Shusarab requires a area, a space which is at least 16 amas wide. If so, says Taisus, how can we suggest that according to one sheet in the Gemara, Beina Amudim in between these pillars, as the din of Meshus Rabbim, where is the 16 amas? It's a narrow area, says Taisus. True, although it's not 16 amas, nevertheless, since the Amudim are situated by, in the Meshus Rabbim, and the area outside these Amudim, contains an area of 16 Amma. So the Bnei Rishul Sarab that are walking from the 16 Amma area in between these Amudim, they make that the area between the Amudim is also considered to be Rishul Sarab. Although, at that specific point, there's no 16 Ammas. Nevertheless, since it is attached, it is a one continuous flow of traffic from outside these Amudim, which indeed has 16 Ammas, through these Amudim, therefore, it is considered to be a continuous Rishus Rabbim, despite the fact that, technically speaking, between the Zamudim, it is not 16 Amis. So this too has a din Rishus Rabbim, on account of the fact that it's a continuation of Rishus Rabbim that contains 16 Amma, a 16 Amma wide area. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rabba Bar Shila, Omar Chizda, Levena Skufa Bishus Rabbim, if there is a Levena, a brick, as she says, the Levena was, Stam Levena was, three Tfachim by three Tfachim, and uh, very, very thin. So we have the Levena, which is three Tvachim by three Tvachim, which is situated upright, standing upright in Shusarab. Levena is a Kufa of And what happened? Vizorak, if this person took an item, he did an Akira, he threw it to the brick, Vitach Bifanel, and the item got stuck on the side of the brick. So it's within three Tvachim of Shusarab, therefore it's considered as though it landed in Shusarab, and he's Chayev. Why? Says Rashi, although the brick is a Mokim Ptur, we know that an area which is less than four Tfachim by four Tfachim, a surface which is less than four Tfachim long and four Tfachim wide, 
is considered to be a Makam Ptur, an insignificant Makam which is Batal, which is subordinate to the adjacent Rishus. There's no Chiv of Achnasa Haitza from a Makam Ptur to any other Rishus. Nevertheless, in this case, says Rashi, since the item landed on the side of the brick, not on top of it, on top of the brick indeed is a Makam Ptur, but on the side of the brick, that's not really placing the item on the brick. That's not really Mesim Tashmishte. That's not the, the place of use of this brick. It's merely, it's merely clinging to its side. Therefore, it doesn't relate to the brick. And since it is within three Tfachim of the Karka, of the ground of Rishis Rabin, we view it as if it landed in Rishis Rabin and a Hanacha was performed. Again, says the Gemara, Levena skufa bishisarabim. If there is a upright levena, vizarak v'tach b'fanel, he throws an item to the side. Chayiv is chayiv. Al gaba. Indeed, if it lands on top, potter is potter because the top of the levena is a very small surface which doesn't have a shear. It's less than four by four, and therefore it's a makom p'tur, and he is potter for throwing the item on top of this levena. Says the Gemara, Abayi v'rov adam tavayu. They both say as follows, It must be at this levena, this brick, is three tfachim above the ground, above the surface of a shusarabim. In that case, the public doesn't step on it and has a din of a makam p'tur. It's not batal to shusarabim. However, this requirement that a makam p'tur needs to be Elevated to each from the ground, that is only regarding a brick. But if we're dealing with hizmi, a small bush, vihigi, thorns, afagav de loyigvi shleisha. In that case, even if they're less than three tfachim, if they're raised less than shleisha off the ground, since the public doesn't step on these things, the flow of traffic is diverted when they come to the hizmi vihigi. Therefore, it doesn't have a din of shusaravim, but rather it's a mokim ptur. If it is not, doesn't have a surface of four tfachim by four tfachim. So only a brick has this requirement. It needs to be three tfachim above the ground for it to be considered a separate entity, detached from Shusarabim and a Makam Tur. But Hizmi Vihigi, since nobody walks on them anyway, they are considered to be detached from Shusarabim and a Makam Tur. Even if they're not three tfachim high. No, I feel his mivihigi. Even his mivihigi need to be elevated three tefachim. Rashi explains because although a person won't walk on them without without shoes, but if one is wearing shoes, he will be derus. He will step on the his mivihigi as well. So therefore, they're not considered to be removed from the flow of traffic from the shusarabim, and they too need to be raised at least three tefachim for them to be considered a makom tur. but solid waste. That is something that people would avoid and walk around, not trample on it. And therefore, even if it's very low, it's not raised three tefachim off the ground, it's considered to be detached from the public domain, from Shusarabim, and has a din of Makam Ptur, even if it's not three tefachim high. Rav Ashi Amar, no, I feel it's Nami, even Tsoya needs to be three tefachim high. You need to detach, you need to be elevated three tefachim off the ground for you to have this status of a Makam Ptur, just because... Technically speaking, circumstantially, the traffic doesn't trample on it, doesn't give it the din of a makam tur. It needs to be at least three tefachim high. So, in summary, we know that a makam tur needs to be three tefachim high. Say a bayi that only applies to a levena, a brick, but his vivihigi doesn't need to be three tefachim high. It's already a makam tur regardless. According to Chiyav Rav, levena and his vivihigi require three tefachim off the ground. Rav Ashi says, even soya. Not only Levena, even Hizmi Vihigi, even Tsoya needs to be three Tfachim off the ground to be considered a Mokaim Ptur. Because once it's three Tfachim off the ground, the surface which is removed, three Tfachim, is considered to be a separate area detached from Shusarabim. And if it's small enough, then it's a Mokaim Ptur. Continues the Gemara. Amar Rabbat Vereshila. Ki Asr Abdimi Amar Vyechna. Ain't Karmelis? Pchusam Arba. There's no Karmelis which is less then four tefachim might four tefachim. If it's less than that, it doesn't have a dinner of a caramelist. A caramelist needs a surface four by four. Vam Rav Shesh is another requirement for a caramelist. But Teifes is alasor. A caramelist seizes, it extends up ten tefachim. The Gemara will analyze what exactly does he mean. 
What does he mean? That the Karmelis is Tifis. It seizes Adasar up till 10th Fach. Perhaps you mean to say, the Ika Mechitza Asara, who to have a Karmelis only if there is a partition, a Mechitza 10th Fach high, then the area contained therein can have a dinner of a Karmelis. Viloy. But if the Mechitza is less than 10th Fach high, then it can have a din of a Karmelis. Is that the case? Ilema the Ika Mechitza Asara, who to have a Karmelis. But, Viloy la a Karmelis, if not, it's not a Karmelis. Viloy, Vomrav Gidom Arav, Chia Bar Yosef, Omarav. That's not the case. A Karmelis doesn't need to be 10th Fach high. Bay Sheim Besech Asara, for example, if you have a home which doesn't have a space of 10th Fach high, the Kiruyay Mashlim Asara, but the thickness of the roof completes it to 10 Tfachim. So the surface inside, the space inside the home is supposed 9 Tfachim high. From floor to ceiling, there's only 9 Tfachim. But the ceiling itself, the thickness of the roof, adds to it, which makes it that the, that the outer, of the, of the outside of the home, totals 10 Tfachim. So if you look at it from the outside, it's 10 Tfachim high. But if you look at it from the inside, you only have a space of 9 Tfachim. So what is the halacha of this home? On top of the roof, one may be metalta bekuloi, one may carry throughout the roof because it's ten tfacham raised above Rishasarab. So the outer surface of the home is ten tfacham raised, and therefore it is dinam shasayachit. However, besoich inside a metalta by eladal damas, inside, since it doesn't have a height of ten tfacham, has dinam a karmas, and one may not be metalta carry within this area. Only four Amis, but not more than four Amis, has dinner of a Karmelis. So apparently, there's no requirement of uh, ten Tfach for a Karmelis. We see clearly even a bias, where the Teich of the bias, the interior of the home, doesn't have an area ten Tfach high, is considered to be a Karmelis. It says, where Ella, you must say, What did the Gemara mean? What did Rav mean when he said that a Karmelis is Teifes? It seizes, extends up to ten. The ad yud would have a karmelis. What he meant to say is that a karmelis only extends upward ten tefachim. Lamalum yud tefachim, but beyond that, lo, you have a karmelis. It's not any more considered to be a status of a karmelis, but rather it is a makom tor. So it's similar to the halacha of rishus rabim, that the din of rishus rabim, the domain, the rishus of the rabim, only extends up until ten tefachim, not beyond it. Continues the gemara of chiha, the amar le shmuel of yuda. Just as Shmuel told Rabbi Yudah, Shinna, a sharp one, let have be milud Shabbato. You shouldn't discuss, you shouldn't be part of a discussion regarding the halachas of Shabbos, regarding Lamala Miasar, regarding something which is higher than Tantfacha. Now, what do you mean by this? Lamayachas, what do you mean? Ilay Madeim Rishasayachat, Lamala Miyud. Did he mean to say that Rishasayachat, a private domain, does not extend higher than Tantfacha? But that's not the case. No, it's Kana Mishasayachat. If one plants a pole, Inside a Rishas HaYachad, V'zorak v'noch al gabav, and he takes an item, and he throws from Rishas Aram up to the top of the pole, which is in Rishas HaYachad, I feel like Gavoyim Eya Amo, even though it's very high, a hundred Amos high, Chayev. He's Chayev, why? Because the Rishas HaYachad extends upward until the sky. There's no limitation for Rishas HaYachad. So apparently, there's no restriction of Yud Tfachem by Rishas HaYachad. So what did he mean? Ella, what he meant to say is as follows. He meant to say that a public domain only extends upward until 10 Tfachim. Because the Rosh Hashanah is intended for, for movement of traffic, the Hilo Harabim, which takes place down below on the surface of the of the Hashanah. And the surface of the Rosh Hashanah, the domain, extends only upward until 10 Tfachim beyond the surface. However, Rosh Hashanah is not only meant for hila for walking through, it's meant for storage, it's meant for all types of usages. And therefore, it extends upward until, until 100 armies. Says the Gemara, if that's what he meant to teach him, that Rosh Hashanah only extends until Yud Tfachim, we know that from our Mishnah, Mas Nisani. That's not Hazarik, the Adamas Bekaisal. If one is standing in Rosh Hashanah, takes an item and throws it against the wall, and uh, it lands, uh, it attaches itself to the, it gets stuck on the Kaisal, if the item landed higher than ten tefachim, so it landed on the side of the wall, elevated ten tefachim off the Rosh Hashanah, it's equivalent to having thrown up in the air, up in the air. It didn't land on anything. 
It's not considered to have, to have, to have a hanacha, because it's up beyond ten tefachim. It's beyond the reach of Rishus Harabim. There was no hanacha on Rishus Harabim. However, lematu biyut tefachim. If the item got stuck to the wall, on a space, on an area which is less within ten tefachim to the surface of Rishus Harabim, in that case, kizarek baaretz. It's as though it landed on the ground, and he did havara. He was he's chayiv, because he was maver. Dal Damas Bishus Harabim. So having an item stuck to the wall depends where, at what point in the wall, at what height. If it's beyond Tantfachim, it's up in the air, there's no Hanachan Shus Rabbim. If it's below Tantfachim, then it is considered to have landed in Rishus Rabbim. So you see clearly that Rishus Rabbim only extends up to Tantfachim. So it's a Mishnah. Why was, what was he coming to tell? What was Shmuel coming to teach Rabbi Yehuda if it's something we know already from the Mishnah? Ella says the more a Carmelis. He was coming to inform him a Chiddush, a novelty regarding a Carmelis. That in Carmelis, Lamala Mayud, and a Carmelis as well has this restriction. The Rishus a Carmelis only extends upward within 10 Tfach up to the surface. Explains the Gemara. That if so, we have two elements, two halachas applied to a Carmelis. We began with, with the halacha of Rabbi Yechanan, that in Carmelis, Pchusimar Ba, that a karmelis needs to have a surface, 4 by 4 tfachim. Then we have the next halacha, a Rav Sheshis, and this was corroborated by, by Shmuel, that the karmelis only extends up until 10 tfachim. And this is what Rav Sheshis meant, but the al-asar means that the rishus of the karmelis only extends upward until 10 tfachim. Beyond 10 tfachim is beyond the reach of the karmelis. It's a mokam tur, it's like avir ba'alma. If so, says the Gemara, in summary, a karmelis contains two elements. On the one hand, it contains an element of Rosh Hashayachit. The din of Dal Dal Dalit, the Mokrim, needs to be 4x4 four four Tfacham. That is unique to Rosh Hashayachit. And the reason is that Rosh Hashayachit, the function, the Shimush of Rosh Hashayachit, is meant for storage, etc. So for that, we need a Mokrim Chashav, a significant Mokrim for Dal Dal Dalit. On the other hand, what is the use of Rosh Hashayachit? It's meant for the for the passing through of traffic, for the flow of the public, for the Hilach Rabbim. That does not have the din, the stipulation, of a Makam Dal Dal Dal. Even if it's less than 4 by 4 Tfachim, it is still, still suitable to walk through, and it is still considered to be Yishas Rabbim. So the Halacha, the stipulation of Dal Dal is unique to Yishas Hayachit. However, the other Halacha of V'teifeses Ad Yud, that only extends upward until 10 Tfachim, that is unique to Yishas Rabbim. Because again, what is the function, what is the shimush, what is the purpose of the public domain? It's meant for the flow through of traffic, for the passing through of the public, the Lilich Harabim. What does that take place? It takes place down below, on the floor, on the surface of the Rishos Harabim. Therefore, the main shimush of the Rishos Harabim is the surface. And the surface only extends upward until Tant Facham. The Gemara learns this in Sukkah, in the Gemara Sukkah, that a Rishos only extends up until Tant Facham. So the concept of the Tefesis al is unique to Rishos Rabbim on account of its specific use, its specific function of the hiluch, of the walking of the Rabbim on its surface. Let's take a look at the Gemara inside. If so, says the Gemara, Va'akilu Barabonon, regarding a Karmelis, the Rabbonon applied leniences, both kules. On the one hand, Mikulu Rishos they gave it the kula of Rishos and the restriction of dal 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 only if it has the area of dal dal like Rishus Hayachid, does it have a din of a Karmelis? At the same time, they gave it a kula of Rishus Harabim. Mikulu Rishus Harabim explains the Gemara. Mikulu Rishus Hayachid is referring to the Ika Mokam Arba if it has a surface space of four by four Tfachim who dive a Karmelis. At that at that point, it has a din of a Karmelis since it has the element of usage. It has the proper Mokam, the proper dimensions which is fit for storage, etc., for placing of items. So in that, in that case, regarding that element, it is doimah to a Rishus HaYachet. It needs to have that condition. V'iloi makam tur. If it's less than 4 by 4 it's a makam tur. V'iloi makam tur ba'alma. V'alma. At the same time, we gave it a kula Rishus HaRabim. V'kula Rishus HaRabim. In what respect? Da'ad yut falchim. Hu da'avi karmelis. That a karmelis only extends upward until tent falchim. Like Rishus HaRabim. Lamalim Yutfachim, but past Yutfachim, like I have a Karmelis, it is not a Karmelis any longer, but rather it's a Makam Tur. So, in summary, 
we have two elements, two requirements, two preconditions for a Karmelis. Number one, it has to be Rocham Arba, like a Rosh Hashayachet. Since it needs to have a Mokham Shimush, a place for usage, a place for storage, a placing of items, similar to Rosh Hashayachet. At the same time, it also has a Kula of Rosh Hashayachet. It is only Tefes Ad Asara, only extends upwards, up until Tatfacham, like Rosh Hashayachet. Rosh Hashayachet is meant to be a Mokham Hiluch, which takes place down below on the, on the ground. Therefore, it only extends upward. The Rishus, the power, the domain only extends upward within the Tfachim of the, of the Karka of Rishus Arab. Continues the Gemara Gufa we learned earlier, Omar of Gidl Marav. Omar of Gidl Marav, Rav Yosem Marav. Bayez she'en boy, she'en toicha yud. If a home, the interior of the home doesn't have a height, a dimension of a height of Yud Tfachim, the Kiruyav mashlim on layud, and the thickness of the roof, the Kiruyay is mashlim. It completes the dimension, the shear of Yitvachim. The halach is al gagoy, outside on the roof, mutal tatal v'kuloy. We may carry there as a dinam shusay ayachit, because it's tent vachim off the ground. V'soycha, but inside this home, a mutal tatal v'yel v'dal d'amis. It is a karmless, and we can only be mutal tatal within for tvachim, just as a karmless. Amar abay, im chokak v'y dal d'al v'shlim v'lasara, if one goes ahead and carves out on the floor of this home, inside the floor of this home, he carves out a little carving of dalad adalad, four tfachim by four tfachim, which is the shear of a of a By doing so, he shlim aliyud, he completed the proper dimension. Right now, inside this carving, inside this chakak, we have a dimension of Yud Tfacham, from the bottom of the Chakak, from the bottom of this ditch, from the floor up until the ceiling, we have an area of Yud Tfacham. In that case, it has a Dinah Rishis HaYachet, Mutal Atatul B'Kuli. Not only can you carry inside this Chakak, inside this ditch, you may carry throughout the entire home, even around this ditch, which doesn't have the proper dimension, which is less than Yud Tfacham. My time, what is the reason? Have a Chay Rishis Because the, the rest of the home it's considered to be like a crevice of Rosh Hashayachet. It's considered to be the corner of Rosh Hashayachet. It, it's subordinate, it's secondary to Rosh Hashayachet. V'choy Rosh Hashayachet, Rosh Hashayachet Domo. And therefore it has a status of Rosh Hashayachet. Rashi uses the word, Inoch havi peyos shal tashmish Rosh Hashayachet. The other area around the Chakak is like peyos. It's like the corners of the usage of Rosh Hashayachet. They're serving the Chakak. They're, they're assisting. They're, they're, they're adding, they're coming to, to serve and to, to help the Tashmish of the Chakak. They're like a crevice in the wall of a Shusayachat. And therefore, they also have a dinner Shusayachat, even though on their own they don't have the proper dimensions. Says the Gemara, the Itmaj we learned, if there is a, a crevice, a hole in, in a wall, which is in a Shusayachat, so we have a, a, a room with Shusayachat and on the side of Shisayachet, we have a crevice, a hole in the wall. Has a din of Shisayachet. What about a hole, a crevice in Shisarab? Chayr Shisarab. What is that? What does that have a din as? Is it a din of Shisarab or not? Abayo in Shisarab Damu. There's no difference between a crevice in Shisayachet or in Shisarab. If there is a hole in the wall along the street, it has a din of Shisarab because it's also serving the purpose. It's serving the Bnei Shisuram. Perhaps they can place an item there temporarily. So it has a din of Even though it's up in the wall. Rav, I'm in low. Lav, Kishisuram, Domu. It doesn't have a din of Shisuram. But rather, it's considered to be its own space, its own entity, as Rashi explains. If it's Fort Fachem wide, if the Chayr has a floor, every surface space of Fort Fachem wide, then it has a din of a Karmless. Otherwise, if it's smaller than that, then it has a din of a Mokam Tur. It's not considered to be part of an extension of the Shusha Rabbim. Why? So, the, the point of the Shusha Rabbim, as we explained earlier, is, is to walk through. It's, it's meant for, for public, public uh, um, traffic. It's meant to walk through for the, for the, for the passing of the, of the public traffic. Therefore, Rabbim holds that only the surface of the Shusha Rabbim, where the Rabbim are walking there, it's considered to have a status of Shusharam, but a chur, a hole in the wall, you can't walk into the hole. So therefore, although you can place some items there, that is not the designation of Shusharam, that is the, not the use, that is not the shimush 
of Rishi Sarab, therefore, it does not have a din of Rishi Sarab. Amal Yerav Labai, Lady Dach, according to you, the Amris, Chayyishis Ram, Kishis Ram, Dom, according to you, a crevice facing Rishi Sarab has din of Rishi Sarab. If so, how are you going to explain my Shna? Why is it different? Miha, from this halacha that we mentioned earlier, the Chiyasir of Dimi of Rabbi Yechonon, Lein Nitzricha, Elo LeKaren Zavis. When the Brais had told us that there's something called Carmelis. The Brais gave us a list of examples of Carmelis, Yam, Bikis, Devanis, and Carmelis. The Gemara before told us that the word Carmelis is meant to include another example of Carmelis. And that is Lein Nitzricha, it's coming to include Elo LeKaren Zavis, a corner which is Smuchel Shisuram, which is adjacent Shisuram. And that too has the status of a Carmelis, as we mentioned earlier, although the, the Rabbim, the overflow crowd forces its way into this corner, but it's not part of the regular mode, it's not within the line of the thoroughfare of the traffic, therefore, it has the of a Carmelis. Says Rabbi Tabai, according to you, that a crevice of a, of a Shisuram, a Chayr, of the Shisuram, since it's serving the Shisuram somewhat, it has a din of Rishis Rabbim. Why is a Karen Zavis, a corner which is adjacent to Rishis Rabbim, why is that considered to be a Karen Zavis, not Rishis Rabbim? Why don't you apply this concept there as well? You should have a dinner of a Chayr Rishis Rabbim and have a dinner of Rishis Rabbim rather than a Karen Zavis. Says the what is the difference? Hasam of Adil The usage is not convenient. It's off to the side. It's out of the way. Therefore, it's not part of the Rishis Rabbim. Rather, it's a Karen Zavis. Hacha, over here, when there's a chayre crevice facing the Rishisarab, nichet hashmishte, it's very convenient to use it. The usage is convenient. One perhaps can store an item there temporarily until, until he comes back. So therefore, it has a din of the Rishisarab. So in summary, a chayre of Rishisayachid is certainly a Rishisayachid. A chayre of Rishisarab. Abayi says, has a din of Rishisarab. It's nichet hashmishte. Rabbi says, no. It is, does not have a din of Rishisarab. And then Farshim explained, because the, the function of Shisarabim is meant for the traffic to flow through, for the walking, for the Hilach Rabbim, that only takes place down on the surface below. Continues the Gemara Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, this will be a kasha to Abayi. The Mishnah says, Hazirik Dal Damas Bekoisel, this was the Mishnah we mentioned earlier, so if one is standing in Shisarabim and he throws an item four Amas away from him, which is the Malach of Mavr Dal Damas Shisarabim, so he threw it against the side of a wall, Hazirik Dal Damas Bekoisel, so if it got stuck to the wall, lamala miyud tvachim, if it landed at the point which was higher than ten tvachim off the ground, which is rabim, because Eric Ba'avr is considered as though he threw it up in the air, it never landed. There was no hanacha. Lamata miyud tvachim, but if it landed at the point which was within ten tvachim to the surface of shusarabim, in that case, it is considered to have landed. Made a hanacha in shusarabim, because Eric Bartz. But we asked the kasha, my Eric Bartz. What does this mean? That if it landed with ten and twelve to the ground, it is considered to be a hanocha on the ground. Volenoch has never landed. Why? Rashi explains when he throws an item against the wall, what happens? It bounces back at him and it comes back to within four amas. So it never landed at the end of four amas. Varav Yechanan, apparently speaking about a unique case, with Vela Shmeinashanu, he threw a plumpy fig, a juicy fig, which actually got stuck to the side of the wall and didn't deflect off the wall. So it remained there, it remained in place, and therefore it's considered to be a hanacha because it rested within ten tefachim to the ground. So now the Gemara will ask, a kasha to abaye from this. If abaye, if you maintain that a chayr of the Rishis Arabim has the din of Rishis Arabim, why did Rav Yechon have to interpret this Mishnah in this manner, speaking about a, a Dvelo Shmena, this fig that got stuck to the side of the wall? We have a more simple way to present this Mishnah. Lukma, he should establish it as follows. He should interpret the Mishnah to be speaking about Bitsroi Vechefetz. He throws an ordinary pebble or an item. There was a hole in the wall, and the item was thrown into the hole. So in this case, it wasn't deflected, it remained there, it rested into the hole, which according to you, has a din of Rishis Sarabim, since the hole was facing Rishis Sarabim. Says more Zimna Mishanila, sometimes they would answer as follows, it's either Abayu who was answering, you go to Bnei Yeshiva, sometimes they would provide the, the following answer to this question. Why don't we establish the mission to speaking about a, a pebble or an item which was simply thrown into the hole in the wall? Shani Tzor V'chefetz, the Mihadav 
because it is common for items like a tzroy and a chayfetz to bounce back regardless of whether there was a hole or not. You throw these items even into a hole, chances are they'll bounce off, they'll deflect off the hole and come back. Therefore, we prefer interpreting the Mishnah with a, with a plumpy fig which got stuck to the side of the wall. In that case, it surely rested there and there was a hanoch. So although you're right, a chur in a wall facing Shusarabim has a din of Shusarabim. Nevertheless, it's not so practical to speak about that case and therefore we prefer speaking about a dvela which was thrown against the side of the wall. That's one approach. Zimnim, occasionally, we gave a different answer. Mishanila gave a different answer because it lays bechur. Speaking about a wall which doesn't have a chur, doesn't have a crevice. Apparently, this Mishnah is not speaking about a wall that has a crevice. Therefore, we can't interpret the Mishnah to be speaking about such a case. How do we know the Mishnah is not speaking about a chur with a chur? I'll bring you a raya. Mimai. How do we know? Midiktani Reisha. Let's take a look at the first part of the Mishnah. Zorak l'mal miyutfachim kizorak ba'avir If he throws the item up to the upper portion of the wall, higher than the tfachim, it's as though he threw up in the air, there was no hanach of it. Ve'isa g'daytach b'koysa l'isbechor If you can suggest, if perhaps this wall is speaking about a wall that has a chur, that has a crevice, if so, if he throws the item up into the, into the chur, which is above ten tfachim, amai kizorak ba'avir Hanach b'chur all agree that a chur, a crevice, which is higher than Nent Fachem, it's beyond the reach of Rosh Hashanah. That certainly has a din of Rosh Hashanah. It's its own separate domain, detached from Rosh Hashanah. So if the wall is speaking about a wall, a kaisa with a chur, you're not going to have to explain. You'll have no way to explain the first part of the, of the Mishnah. Why, if a person throws an item into that chur, is it considered to be zerg ba'avir, like he threw it up in the air, there's not a nacha performed. Certainly there was a hanacha performed, because a chayr that's way up in the wall has a dinam shasay ayachid. V'chit heima mas nisan, the last vodal dal dalid. Perhaps you will counter this argument by saying, well, certainly the chayr has a chayr. What about the question that you asked? How come when he throws an item into that chayr, it's considered to be a zrika ba'avr, a nanam shasay ayachid? Very simple, because the chayr was a small chayr. Didn't have a proper surface area of Rosh Hashanah. It wasn't four by four tefachim, and therefore, even though it was a chur up beyond ten tefachim, it is still not considered to be Rosh Hashanah. Says the Gemara, but that wouldn't be the case. Even if it doesn't actually have a surface area four by four, it can still be considered Rosh Hashanah. Va'amar v'idam ramchia zorak lemalam yud tefachim. If one throws an item higher than ten tefachim. And landed into a small teeny crevice, which doesn't have a surface area of 4x4. Nevertheless, there's a machlaikis regarding this, this hole. Bonil machlaikis, Rabbanon. This involves a dispute, a machlaikis, between Rameh and Rabbanon. Rameh is Ashlim. We carve out to complete the required dimension. We don't carve out. We're not chaykik to be mashlim to, to complete the required area. This is a machlekes which was, which was said regarding the halach of mezuzah. We know that a doorway, in order for it to be obligated to be mechuyiv in mezuzah, it needs to have a certain dimension, it needs to be ten tefachim high, four tefachim wide. So the doorway needs to have a space of ten by four. What if you have a dome? So the, the bottom of the dome is indeed four tefachim wide. But once you go further up, the dome rounds itself up to the point that there is no, there's no reicha, there's no width of Fort Fachim. It closes up to a point. The question is, is it chayv mezuzah or not? According to Ramea, yes, we are chaykik lahashlem. We carve out the corners and we consider it as though it's wide open and it is tent Fachim high, Fort Fachim wide. According to Rabbanu, we are not chaykik lahashlem. We don't view it as if it's carved out. And since there is no doorway which is ten by four, because the bottom part of the doorway, indeed it's four tefachim wide, but it's not yet ten tefachim high. Once you rise up five, six, seven tefachim, the doorway narrows. So we don't have a doorway which is ten by four. It is part of a mezuzah. We don't say chaykik in lahashlam. We don't say we carve out the excess, the excess wall, and we consider it as though it's wide open and has the proper dimensions. Here too, in our case, the more will apply, this machlek is here as well. When we have a small chayr, a chayr koshu, according to Rameir, 
since the wall itself is a large wall, it's a wide wall, it has the, the space inside that potentially the khur can be carved into, can be extended into the surface of the wall. So therefore we view this khur as a makam khashif. It has a status as though it's fourth fachim wide and it has a dinner of shisayachit. According to Rabban, we don't say that and it doesn't have a dinner of shisayachit. Therefore, says the Gemara, we can't say that the ratio is speaking about there was a khur, that there was a hole in the wall, and the Mishnah tells us if he throws an item up into that hole, it's kizarik ba'aver, it doesn't have a hanacha, it's as though it landed in the, in the, in the, in the mid air. Because if indeed it was speaking about there was a hole there, according to Reb Meir, even if it's a small hole, less than 4x4, four four, it would still have the status of Shisayachat, because we, do, we apply the concept of a chaykik in lahashlam. We view it as if it's carved out, as if the surface area of the hole is greater. It has reached the proper dimensions of 4x4. Four says the Gemara Lalav, it must be, Shema Mino, it must be, it's apparent, it's obvious that this mission is not speaking about a Khaisal that has a Khur. Because otherwise we can't explain the ratio, according to Ramea. Ella Shema Mino, it's pretty obvious, the Khaisal the less be Khur. We're speaking about a Khaisal that doesn't have a hole. Shema Mino, indeed, this is a proof. So indeed, there's actually no Kasha from this mission on Abai, because Abai is speaking about a Khur Rishisarabim. A hole, a crevice in the kaisel on the wall that is facing Shisarab. This Mishnah, however, is not speaking about a wall that has a hole, but merely it's speaking about if one takes a Devela Shmena, a plumpy fig, and tosses it up against the side of the wall. The Mishnah tells us, depends where it lands. If it's Lamala Me'asara, that is Kazarik Ba'avir, it never landed in Shisarab. If it's Lamata Me'asara, it is Kazarik Ba'aritz, it is as though it landed on the surface of Shisarab, and Hanukkah was performed, and it completed. The mass of the Malacha of Havara of Maver, the Adama is Bishisarab. Continues the Gemara Gufa, we learned earlier. Omar of Chiz, not Kana Bishisayachit, if one positions a pole in Rishisayachit, Vizorak, Vinachal Gabov, and he throws an item from Rishisarab up until the top of the pole of Rishisayachit, Afilu Gavoya Mea Amma, Chayav, even if the pole is a hundred Amas high, he's Chayav. Why, Bipnei Rishisayachit, because the domain of Rishi Sayyachet extends upward until the Rukia, up until the sky. So actually in this halacha of Rukhizda is contained two separate chidushim, two separate halachas. Number one, that Rishi Sayyachet extends upwards up until the Rukia. And number two, that it is considered to be a hanacha, a maisa hanacha, even on top of a narrow pole, even though it doesn't have a surface of four by four tfach. Says the more lame, perhaps we can say, Rav Chizda is following the opinion of Rabbi, the sign as we learned, Zark, Menachal Gabbaz is Koshu, Fon is standing in Shisravim, and he throws an item onto a narrow ledge, which doesn't have an area of Dalad Adam, Dalad. Rabbi Mechaev, Vachachov and Poitrin. So apparently, according to Rabbi, we don't require a Hanacha to be on a surface area of four Tvachim by four Tvachim. And indeed, this is consistent with Rav Chiz's Dim. So at this point in the Gemara, the Gemara interpreted the Machlekes of Rebbe and Chacham to be speaking about such a type, a type of case where a person standing in Shusarabim and he throws an item into Shusayachin and landed on a very small, narrow area. According to Rebbe, he is Chayev, although the Hanacha was on a narrow area which wasn't 4 by 4 Tfach. Amr Abaye? No. You're misinterpreting the Machlekes. If it would be a case where the item landed in Rishi Sayachit, just as the case of Chizda, certainly everybody will agree. Rabbi and the Chacham will both agree that he is Chayev. There's no requirement of Dalad Adalad. Ela rather Hacha Be'ilan Ha'omen Rishi Sayachit V'noi Fainoi Rishi Sarab. We're speaking about a unique case where the tree was standing in Rishi Sayachit. The trunk of the tree, the base of the tree was in Rishi Sayachit. Be'ilan Ha'omen Rishi Sayachit. V'noi Fainoi Rishi Sarab. And the branch was extending outward into Shusarab. And what happened here? A person was standing in Rosh Hashanah. He took an item and he threw it four Ames in Rosh Hashanah. So this wasn't involving a case of Hachnasa, of taking an item from domain to domain. But rather, speaking about a person who was throwing an item within Rosh Hashanah, he threw an item, four Ames in Rosh Hashanah. And where did it land? Venoch Anoifa. It landed on this narrow branch that doesn't have a, a surface of four by four tfachim. So again, Abayi maintains that if it will be in Rosh Hashayachid, as in the case of Chizda, there's no requirement of Dalad Dalad, according to all, according to Rabbi, all according to Rabban. We're speaking about Rosh Hashayachid, 
Rosh Hashanah is different. Rosh Hashanah does require 4x4. Four four. However, this is a unique case where the branch doesn't have 4x4, four four, but the base, the trunk of the tree where the branch is extending from, is significant enough, it's wide enough, it has dollar dal. And that is the basis for the Machlekes. The Rebbe Savar, Amrinon, Shadi Naifa Batsi Kore. Rebbe holds that we, we throw, we attach, we attribute the knife to its ikr. We, we give the halacha, we attribute the halacha of the ikr, of the base, of the trunk of the tree, we give it, we apply it to the knife, to the branch as well. Just as the, the ikr of the tree has a surface area of 4 by 4 tfachim, the branch as well acquires that status and it's considered, we view it as though it has 4 by 4 tfachim. Therefore, it's considered to be a proper hanacha on a makam dal da dal. For Rabbana Sari, no, lo yamrina on a shadi noifa basi ikari. We don't say this concept that we attribute, we give the status of the ikar to the knife. The ikar is 4x4, four four, but the knife is a narrow area, it doesn't have a dinner 4x4. Four four. Therefore, if one throws an item onto the narrow branch, it is not considered as though it landed on a makam dalad dalad, and it's not considered to be hanach. But this is only because it's shusarab. But regarding hanach and shusayachet, perhaps everybody agrees with Rav Chizda that we don't require a makam dalad dalad. He explains, time of Rav Chizda, the lay be'inah makam dalad dalad, because we apply the concept of basic command the mal yadami, that the home is as if it's filled up, which is considered as though it's filled up with items, it's meant to store items there, therefore, wherever the item lands, is considered as though it landed on a mokam arba, on a mokam choshev, on a, on a ikr mokam tashmish, it's not considered as though it landed up in the thin air, because the whole entire space of Rishon is meant to be filled, meant to be used as storage, it's all one entity, the floor, the ceiling, the floor up to the sky, even if a place doesn't have a ceiling, it's considered to be one, one entity, one makam shimush, and the significant, the chashiv makam, and an uh, item that lands anywhere in that makam, is considered as though it has landed on a makam chashiv, of dal dal dalid, and it's considered to be a hanukkah.